2007, three men, Chris Cleverly, Oswald Boate, and Prince Hassan Kimbugwe, saw an opportunity to help tip Africa from endemic poverty towards virtuous growth. All they needed to do was to build a state of belief. And so they created Made in Africa, a foundation to help build a better Africa. Made in Africa, an organization designed to finance projects that promote wealth and self-sufficiency in Africa. Made in Africa is a, an organization that myself and uh, Oswald and Chris set up and really it was more to find uh, solutions for Africa to take it upon ourselves, uh, just like every African should. To celebrate African unity is to understand what it is to be an African. The tipping point had been reached, where one decisive act, or just one more word, could change everything like the former Chinese leader Deng Xiaoping's 1992 speech in Shenzhen, which opened up China, or the late British Prime Minister Harold Macmillan's 1960 Wind of Change speech. Africa needed a speech to herald the new Africa, its rebirth. Chris Cleverly created a speech to be addressed to the 53 African presidents gathered at the AU summit but they needed the right person to deliver it. That man was the Reverend Jesse Jackson, the civil rights activist who collaborated with the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. on many of his legendary speeches. He agreed and wanted to help engineer a change. We all come from there. The 2007 African Union Summit in Accra, Ghana was the moment. The atmosphere a powder keg of personalities. Muammar al-Gaddafi was making a very real move to form one Pan-African state. Many, particularly outside of the continent, objected. The only state they wanted to change was that of belief. Thank you, honored guests, to also consider what can be achieved. If through the power of unity we who are made in Africa, Stand and as the three friends stride purposefully towards Britain's traditional seat of power, very little looks likely to get in their way. Foreign Minister from Nigeria. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the day, and we'll see you again. Thank you. Let us have a vision of Africa. The birthplace of humanity, the wealth of the world. Let us celebrate and create a future of Africa where it takes its place as the first amongst peoples, an African century of African excellence. It's a beautiful place and I'm frustrated by the open drains. You know, I'm frustrated by the fact that, you know, there's a road from Accra to Kamasi and it takes you five hours to do something that should maybe take you 45 minutes. So it's, it's out of frustration of saying, well, why is it like this? We do not need to follow the failures and mistakes of the industrialized nations. Our strength is that we can start afresh. A continent not characterized by disease, war, and hunger. I think that once we start to say that your struggle is like my struggle, 
then we can start to help each other solve the problems that we experience on a, on a, on a local level and, and, on, and on a global level. If you look at India, and you look at China, they were opened up by railways. If you look about America, it was opened up by a railway. Trans-Siberian Railway opened up Russia. So big infrastructure projects which join the countries together in Africa are key. Without deserts reclaimed by a forest or biodiesel trees from Ovidition, the freedom that could be seen from the moon, our waters clean, homes worthy of the name, high-speed trains, wireless education, mobile banking, sustaining for cities where the light never grows dim. And everyone has access to the opportunity of a life worth I trust substantial increases in our foreign assistance, which is in Africa's interest and America's interest. But the true sign of success is not whether we are a source of perpetual aid that helps people scrape by. It's whether we are partners in building the capacity for transformational change. The speech Obama just gave is uh, almost like a mirror of the speech that Chris wrote in 2007. this day, not only what we have achieved, but what we have promised silently. Let us dedicate this day to God, the God of all, the God who inspires and gives us the strength to dream into reality in New Africa, abundance for all of its children, that we may lift the pain and guilt of the world and give our gifts in harmony from this day forth, this day of African independence. This day is the African independence day. This day, this day, this day. And we all love this as our motherland. Thank you for our birth and our tradition. And African unity is an ideal that does exist and will never disappear. day of African independence. May God bless and keep you and keep hope alive. And so the speech was delivered to the 53 presidents, the custodians of Africa, and like a stone thrown into a lake, the ripples of change were set in motion.